We are in the Rocky Mountains of northwestern Montana in the dead of winter, where BNSF trains climb the frozen route to the Great Northern over Mariah's Pass. In part one of this two-part series, we followed the line between Whitefish and Essex. Now let's head to the top, where trains crest the Continental Divide along the southern boundary of Glacier National Park. We began at Essex, just east of the Isaac Walton Inn as an eastbound empty grain train starts its climb toward the pass. Another classic Dash 9, number 4518, helps the empty grainer up the snowy mountain pass. It looks like a classic GE toaster. Essex is the last remaining flag stop on Amtrak's Empire Builder route between the West Coast and Chicago. The eastbound number 8 approaches the platform located just around the curve to the east of the hotel. This morning, two passengers are detraining for a stay at the Isaac Walton Inn. The Amtrak station is yet another perk of this classic railroad destination nestled in the Rocky Mountains of northwestern Montana. BNSF 8452 gets a run at the 1.8% grade with its train of empty oil cans for North Dakota. This is the train we saw at Belton with the CSX unit on the rear. The snow picks up again as the spreader set heads for the pass. Snow fell nearly every day during our eight days of filming in late February and early March. 
Under a darkening sky, BNSF 3280 lugs more empty tanks up the mountain. As the snow increases, the work train gets another run over the pass. The classic GN dozers can really throw the snow. In the annual battle against snow, one of the railroad's most effective defenses are the numerous snow sheds in areas prone to avalanches. The first we encounter is Shed 12, found just up the hill from Essex along the eastern flank of Snowshed Mountain. Traffic is busy on the hill today. First up, BNSF 8204 East with another empty tank train heading for the Bakken oil fields in North Dakota. The train meets BNSF 3868 West with a heavy grain shuttle in tow.
The train slows for congestion. Main 1 is out of service between Essex and Pinnacle, creating a bottleneck of traffic this morning. The High Line sub follows the middle fork of the Flathead River just a little further above Essex. The railroad crosses Sheep Creek Trestle before going back to single track at Java West. In the distance, we can make out Snowshed 12 as an eastbound manifest led by BNSF 8185 heads up grade on track 1. Canadian National 3236, a General Electric ET44AC, works by remote control on the rear of the train. Winter holds the Flathead National Forest in its grip. The western larch casts its spindly shadow upon the snow, appearing dead but this tree is deciduous, losing its needles in the fall. It has a few more months to hibernate while the frigid winds of winter tear through the mountains. Another westbound grain shuttle heads through Java East. In dynamics, the heavy train crosses the Java East Bridge, accompanied by the smell of diesel exhaust and hot brake shoes. If you've never been in the cab of one of these trains, it's really hard to describe the feeling of 14,000 tons pushing you down the mountain. Two remote control GEs, including BNSF 1050, aid with dynamic braking. The 1050 is a Dash 944 CW built for BNSF in November of 1996. It's nice to see the old Heritage One paint scheme, which was a salute to the Great Northern. The railroad flies over Highway 2 at Java East.
Originally called Nimrod, Java East has always been a hotspot for rail fans. It's a great place to watch trains digging into the mountain grade above Essex. BNSF 5037 heads our way with a unit train of grain empties. This locomotive consist includes heritage unit number 6017, with many of the fallen flags that make up today's BNSF. Instead of painting engines and vintage paint schemes, BNSF chose to add logos to 10 units in honor of their 25th anniversary in 2020. The logos include the CB&Q, Great Northern, Northern Pacific, Burlington Northern, Santa Fe, Frisco, Colorado and Southern, and the Spokane, Portland and Seattle. The spreader set heads back down the mountain after working to the summit of Mariah's Pass. Another winter's day draws near to a close, judging by the lunar signal above the frozen world. Back on Earth, a high green shows for BNSF 5097 with international stacks for the West Coast. The sound of dynamic brake fans ring loud and clear in the cool evening air as another day of rail fanning draws to a close. The next morning brings a different mood to the mountain above Java East. Another winter storm is dropping its load in the Montana Rockies and BNSF 6352 West is dropping down grade along the southern flank of Running Rabbit Mountain.
BNSF 8258 takes another empty crude oil train through Java East. The work train with the snow dozer heads for Essex after making a flip to the summit. At Java East, the railroad leaves the middle fork of the Flathead River for the course of Bear Creek, which will ultimately lead it to the summit of the pass at the Continental Divide. This is the heart of the Snowshed District, and therefore the threat of avalanche is greatest here. There are 11 sheds still in use on the west side of Marias Pass. If you could put them end to end, their total length would extend for 1.3 miles. This is Shed 10. Typical of what is found on the pass, it is made of Douglas fir timber, mostly 12x12 12 12 beams, with a concrete liner on the uphill side. The sheds are inspected on a regular basis, and timbers are completely retreated every 15 years. For now, BNSF has no plans for replacing the old GN sheds, since they still do the job they were intended for over 100 years ago. A westbound manifest led by BNSF 4056 heads downgrade to Shed 10 on the number 2 track.
BNSF 8315 leads a Pasco, Washington to Northtown, Minnesota manifest upgrade on Main 1. This is the day for manifest trains. BNSF 6021 heads down Main 2 with an interesting unit in tow. The SSP 3096 is an EMD GP39-2 high cab en route to the Spokane, Spangle and Palouse Railroad in eastern Washington. The branch line operates out of Marshall Canyon, where it connects to the BNSF south of Spokane. The best way to see the snow sheds in winter is to get off the ground. During a break between snowstorms, BNSF 5146 leads another manifest train out of Shed 9 near Single Shot. The icy waters of Bear Creek and Highway 2 are seen to the left of the train. A couple of deer scatter as the train approaches Shed 7.
A classic Dash 9 44 CW, number 4679, lends its tractive effort to the rear of the train. BNSF 9155 leads an empty oil train out of Shed 7 on a blustery afternoon as it works around the foot of Snow Slip Mountain. It meets its counterpart inside of Shed 6. Ninety-one fifty-five meets the DPs of the westbound at the burned shed just outside of Shed 4D. BNSF 6798 remotely powers the eastbound through Shed 4D.
This is what is left of Shed 4C, which burned years ago and was never rebuilt. It is simply referred to as the burned shed. Lost in the falling snow, BNSF 9155 East continues its climb through Blacktail, while gusty winds and near whiteout conditions wait for it just a few miles away at the Continental Divide. Snow removal is the primary wintertime activity on Mariah's Pass. The Harsco Spreader Ditcher is at work at former Shed 4C. Apparently, the snow slide activity at this location has never been bad enough to warrant replacing the old snow shed. Approaching the top of the pass, the railroad rounds the big curve at milepost 1152, just below Mariah's, as demonstrated by the spreader set. The work train nears the switch at Mariah's, milepost 1152.2, with the Continental Divide reaching skyward just beyond. You are now standing at the summit of Mariah's Pass, elevation 5,215 feet above sea level. In the dead of winter, conditions can be harsh. To the south of the main line stands a memorial to President Teddy Roosevelt, who was recognized for his leadership in conservation. Today, we are thinking about conserving heat and turning our attention to the train that is sneaking up on us from the west. A pair of engines sneak by on Main 2, a helper set returning light to Essex.
Weather conditions can change rapidly on the mountain. A break in the clouds reveals the summits of Little Dog Mountain and Summit Mountain, part of the Lewis Range. BNSF 3730 takes an empty oil train over the top. Snow and wind have returned as BNSF 5540 leads another westbound over the summit. The yellow unit is an SD70 ACE Tier 4 demonstrator. banner of Progress Rail, the engine is powered with a four-stroke EMD 12-cylinder 1010 and is rated at 4,400 horsepower. It is 76 feet 8 inches long and weighs in at 428,000 pounds. On this trip, the engine is on its way to Washington and will be in Vancouver in a couple of days. The success of the Tier 4 Ace is yet to be seen in an age currently dominated by GE. Another oil train slips by on the number one track. The snow has let up, but trackside sensors are reporting wind gusts of over 65 miles per hour as the spreader set works up main one with a nose plow. After reversing direction at Bison, the train heads back toward Essex on Main 2.
summit switch is still guarded by a classic cantilever signal bridge, a welcome surprise in the 21st century. At dusk, the wind picks up strength as the temperature plummets into the 20s. A manned helper set out of Essex waits at East Summit for a line down Main 2. An eastbound train is stalled at Shed 10, and they are being sent to the rescue. It will be long after dark before they return. Just another day of railroading on Marias Pass. The next morning, BNSF 5746 leads an eastbound manifest past a frozen pond on the windswept tablelands near False Summit. Here, the pine forests give way to the open plains. Continuing down the east side, we arrive at the east entrance to Glacier National Park. The Glacier Park Lodge is a local landmark. It was the first hotel built by the Great Northern and opened in 1913. The charming buildings fit right into the grand setting of the park. This view can be found near the Midvale Creek Trestle, which contains a fence due to the heavy winds that have toppled trains here in the past.
Just east of the Midville Creek Trestle is East Glacier Park Station, a seasonal stop for the Empire Builder between April and October. It is in walking distance of Glacier Park Lodge and was built at the same time by the railroad in 1913. Both the lodge and depot were built out of Douglas fir logs, which were shipped to this location by rail. Early park visitors arrived by train, so this became the gateway to Glacier. East Glacier is located along Highway 2, and the park is entered by driving under the main line. BNSF 6832 heads over the park entrance road in the late afternoon. A classic EMD SD70 Mac puts a nice period on this eastbound. One cannot visit East Glacier without taking in the Two Medicine Bridge, located just east of town. The 1,040-foot bridge was built in 1900 and used for publicity shots by the Great Northern to draw visitors to the park. An eastbound oil train crosses the bridge. After crossing the Two Medicine River, trains dig in for an uphill climb through Grizzly. Here, the line goes back to double track for 4.3 miles to Spotted Robe. We catch our eastbound empty grain shuttle one last time with the 6017 Heritage Unit in tow. The slow climb through the mountains is nearly over.
the train drops downgrade to spotted robe. This afternoon is clear, calm, and cold. The temporary absence of wind is welcome as the temperature has dropped to 11 degrees Fahrenheit. We end our journey here at Spotted Robe, milepost 1131.8 on the Highline sub. BNSF 4174 leads a Pasco bound manifest toward the setting sun. It's amazing how quickly the scene changes. Our clear sunny afternoon is over as clouds form over the continental divide. This manifest continues west and soon will disappear into the swirling snow as the mountains are lost in the shadow of the earth. If all goes well, it will be recrewed 86 miles to the west at Whitefish. But first, it must deal with what lies ahead. Winter on Mariah's Pass. You have been watching an excerpt from Winter on Mariah's Pass. Available on DVD, HD Blu-ray, and 4K Digital with Vimeo On Demand. Visit 7ideaproductions.com to order. There is a link in the description below. And if you like what you're seeing, be sure to like and subscribe to catch more videos like this added weekly. From all of us at 7idea Productions, thanks for watching.